In this guide, we'll cover the basics of navigation in Flutter that are required by most real-world apps. This guide will be using the navigator only and no named route navigation. If you're here for a specific section, here are all the timestamps on the screen right now. It can also be found in the description below. This guide is a direct response to answering and seeing similar questions on Stack Overflow. The series will be called Overflown Stacks and it will be dedicated to short and direct guides for specific tasks. One quick thing, please subscribe to this YouTube channel and activate your notifications. If you'd like to follow along, head over to github.com slash fullstacks star and clone the Flutter Tutorials repo. Open number 5 basic navigation and drag the start folder into your IDE. Before we jump into it, let's take a quick look at our project structure and how it's set up. We have our main file that imports and starts with page 1. And then we have a page 1 and a page 2 dot dot file. Both of these pages has large and centered bold text so that we can see when we navigate. We'll start by adding the basic navigation to page 1. We'll add a floating action button on page 1 and inside the onPressed function we will call navigator.push. This function takes in our build context and a material page route. You supply your builder function with the widget that you'd like to place on top of the stack. We'll add in the page2 widget and import its file. If you save and run this code, you should see a floating action button appear on your screen. Then pressing this button should take you to page2. Next up we'll handle navigating back programmatically. We'll add a floating action button onto page 2 and within the onPressed we'll call navigator.pop. The pop takes in a context and that's it for now. When you run your code again and you press on the floating action button on page 1, you should see another floating action button on page 2. If you press that, you'll navigate back to page 1. Next up, let's look at how we can get a result from the page that we navigated to so that we can perform an action in the original calling page. Luckily for us, all the functions in the navigator returns a future, so we can await the result in our original caller. In the onPress function on page 1, we'll store the result from our future in a variable called navigation result. We'll change our callback to be async, and then we'll await that navigation.push call so that we can get the result from it. We can then check the navigation result and see if it's true. If it is true, we want to show a dialog with some text in it. The last thing for us to do is to return the actual value that we want our future to resolve. So head over to page 2 dot dot and pass in true into the navigator dot pop function. If you navigate back using the floating action button now, you should see a result pop up saying navigation result success. But you'll also notice that if we press the back button, that result does not show up. This takes us to the next scenario that a real world app has to deal with. Preventing the back button from popping the current view. Flutter provides us with a widget called Wall Pop Scope, which you can surround your scaffold with. This widget will call the on Wall Pop function whenever the back button is pressed. If you want the system to handle the back button press, you return true. If you want to handle it yourself, you return false. If you launch the app now and press the back button, you'll see that nothing is happening. Let's add in an app bar so that we can add our own back pressed functionality on the back button. We'll give our app bar a title of page 2 and we'll set our leading widget to a icons button and we'll give it the back button arrow. Within the on pressed function of our icon button, we can now call the same navigator.pop function and pass in the value true. Now when pressing the back button, you'll see that nothing happened. But when we press the back arrow in our app bar, you'll see that we still get our alert dialog. If we wanted to add this functionality into the actual back button press, we can just change our on will pop function. Instead of just returning false, we'll change our function to be an async future. And before we return false, we'll call that same navigator.pop call so that we can still pass the value back on back pressed. Now you'll see that going back with a back button will pop up the navigation result success dialog as well. Let's do a quick refactor to move our navigator.pop call into a shared function so that it's easier to change it when we want to update our results. 
we'll create a new function called pop navigator with result and we'll pass in a boolean called success. We can then move the navigator.pop function call into our pop navigator with result function and replace true with success. We additionally have to pass in our build context so let's add that quickly. Then we can go ahead and replace all our navigator.pop calls with pop navigator with result and pass in the value true. We'll remove the app bar for now since the back button handles the same function call as well. In most cases, you'd want to return more than just true or false. So let's update our code so that we can pass in different values to our pop and we can handle multiple scenarios within our calling function. To keep the example simple, we'll show a different dialog when navigating back using the back button and navigating back using the floating action button. We'll start by changing our success value in pop navigator with result to dynamic and called result. Then we'll go to where we return from the back press and we'll pass in from back and we'll go to the floating action button on press and we'll pass in from button. Now back in page one where we call our navigation, we can check for from back and for from button and we can show an appropriate alert dialog. If you run the code now, Navigating back from page 2, you should see a different alert dialog depending on which method you used. This example just shows that you can pass in different values. So if you have something where your result depends on success or failure, you can return that to your calling function so that you can handle that appropriately. If you found this guide useful, please like and subscribe. And if you have any suggestions on what you want me to cover, please leave a comment and I'll respond. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.